This is going to be my third video in Can a Bodybuilder Fight um, series that I've done on YouTube so far. And this video is geared towards guys whose main passion is uh, bodybuilding or they might be into powerlifting or some other sport. Um, but they still want some fighting style or self-defense system to have in case they uh, ever have a um, situation on the street where they have to defend themselves. And this is for uh, the guy who has an interest in basic self-defense and martial arts skills, but they don't really want to commit to frequent martial arts classes um, or pay for a dojo because it may conflict with your uh, bodybuilding uh, program. Or you may not be able to afford a second gym membership to uh, get those fighting skills. And since my previous videos on bodybuilding and self-defense got uh, more views than my other videos have so far, I figured I would add this third part. And in this video, I want to give a few suggestions and also suggest a couple of books where you can learn some basic skills to use in a fight. Um, without really having to interrupt your training as a dedicated uh, bodybuilder because that definitely can happen um, You know when I was taking uh, MMA classes uh, I got a bad case of shin splints and uh, This really set me back especially on squats and um, leg day and um, It kind of killed some of my progress in the gym. So it's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video to give uh, bodybuilders another alternative um, For the bodybuilder I think really your best bet and the best martial art and self-defense skills to look into um, Especially since you're not wanting to be a competitive fighter you want to use this in a street fight situation or a self-defense situation and I would highly suggest looking into the skills that were taught to uh, soldiers during World War II and dirty fighting techniques which are intended to end a fight quick um, they don't take a lot of time to learn and it's not for use in a competitive sports setting and why does this suggestion apply so well to a bodybuilder situation well, it's because your primary focus is on your weightlifting workouts and your normal gym routine. And uh, just as soldiers in World War II, uh, their primary focus was on fighting with firearms, marksmanship, and other survival skills. They just didn't have the time to spend on lots of hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat training. And in World War II, it wasn't as much of a factor as it was during World War I and in previous wars. Um, when men were fighting very up close in the trenches and hand-to-hand uh, -hand and close quarter fighting did happen in World War II but it wasn't as prevalent as it had been in the previous wars because modern firearms and the disappearance of trench warfare uh, as seen in first world war uh, the war the first world war uh, world war um, eliminated much need for it um, in discussions with my grandfather, who was a World War II platoon sergeant in uh, Patton's 3rd Army, he said the use of bayonet was a very rare thing, uh, especially in the Western European theater of World War II. Uh, he also did show me a few of the joint locks and chokeholds he was taught for basic hand-to-hand -hand, uh, when he was a soldier. And uh, the first book I would like to suggest the bodybuilder with an interest in self-defense check out is Get Tough by Major Fairburn. And this was taught to both the British and American troops during the Second World War. It's uh, a very straightforward book and it's easy to follow. Uh, and you can learn it even without a partner. Moves like the upward chin jab can be practiced on one's own hand. Or if you do have a training dummy, that's even better. And um, I'll post a link uh, to the description of this book, and you can read it for free online. Uh, the second book I wanted to briefly mention is called Bodybuilding and Self-Defense by Miles Callum. And this book follows much of the same uh, style of fighting, uh, which was taught in Fairburn's Day. Um, the book demonstrates many uh, joint locks and judo throws, 
but it's not as much, uh, it doesn't feature as much striking, which is one of the downfalls of the book. Uh, and the third one I would uh, recommend adding to your library is a Paladin Press book called uh, The Dirty Dozen by Sergeant Major Larry Jordan. And he was a Green Beret. And this is an excellent book because Jordan's system was designed to give soldiers 12 simple techniques to use in differing scenarios, which are devastating and it will end a fight quickly. And again, it takes very little time to learn, which is why it's great for the bodybuilder. Um, the strikes are aimed at vital targets on the human body. And the bonus of this book is Jordan also includes a chapter called The Winning Mindset. Or, sorry, it's called The Winning Mind. And um, this is very important. A lot of books uh, leave this out uh, because I think the mindset in a fight is really the most important thing. As you can have all, these, all the skills um, in your arsenal, but if your mind is not prepared in that moment um, when you're faced with a life or death situation, um, it's likely to end bad for you because many people... Um, can freeze up and you know they um, their training uh, kind of goes out the window uh, because fear takes over um, so the mindset is a very important thing um, and the other suggestion I would make for the bodybuilder who's like I said their first priority is the weights secondary is uh, self-defense training is um, I would probably invest in a good heavy bag or standing bag and that way you could practice basic strikes uh, and I do this at least three times a week minimum um, and there is certainly no substitute for real life sparring but uh, getting a bag is better than nothing as you can practice strikes over and over and over again and if you do have to use them um, it comes as more of a second nature rather than as something awkward or with this with uh, hesitation, uh, which will happen if you never practice striking. Um, and as a bodybuilder, uh, you know, lifting heavy weights, you're going to have a better than average grip strength over most of the population because you're constantly gripping and moving heavy weights. Um, you know, and that comes into play when you're grabbing hold of someone for a joint lock or um, a judo type throw, uh, wrestling type throw. Uh, and I would suggest some direct grip strength, grip strength training um, and forearm training. And this is where the farmers walk with heavy dumbbells. It's really good. Um, and for more direct hand training, I also like using uh, the eagle catcher. Uh, which is very popular uh, with martial artists. Uh, so again, in closing for the bodybuilder whose primary focus is on the weights, you know, you don't have time for to go to um, MMA classes or a martial arts class, just doesn't fit into your schedule, does, just doesn't fit into your budget. Um, check out these three books. Um, you know, look up some World War II uh, fighting techniques on YouTube. Um, these aren't very hard, uh, techniques to learn. It's not a hard style to learn. Um, if you have a partner to kind of walk through the moves with, uh, to practice with, that's great. If you don't, like I said, invest in a bag, um, and definitely study, uh, the, the picture demonstrations of the techniques. Um, and I would highly suggest adding those three books to have in your library. They're a good reference. And um, practice when you can. Like I said, I would at least try to practice uh, a minimum of three times a week. And I don't think that should uh, really take away from your bodybuilding training all that much. Anyway, that's it for the video. Thank you very much. If you like my content, uh, please subscribe and look for future updates. Thank you. Thank you.